Coming up, the Devils get a shutout win while the Stars get held scoreless for the first time this season. This is Locked On Game to Game NHL. Every game, every team, every angle. Locked On Game to Game, your team every day. Welcome in. You are listening to Locked On Game to Game NHL, local experts going over the biggest stories on the ice. I am your host, Kainani Stevens. Thank you so much for making Locked On your first listen every single weekday. The Stars suffered their first shutout loss of the season last night at home, giving up four goals to the Maple Leafs. Locked On Stars looks at that defeat. The Dallas Stars get shut out for the first time this season. Jason Robertson's 18-game point streak has come to an end. Hey, everybody, this is Dane Lewis with the Locked On Dallas Stars podcast. Just back from the American Airlines Center, where many thought we would be witnessing a really intense, explosive offensive battle, and it was really only explosive offensively for one side of the ice, and that side of the ice belonged to the team in white and blue. The Toronto Maple Leafs blank the Dallas Stars. The first time they've been shut out this season, nobody gets a goal, nobody gets a point, including Jason Robertson, who was two games away from tying the franchise record for consecutive games with at least one point. Uh, And I mean, you just look at this game and it's maybe the most frustrating game to have watched this season as a Dallas Stars fan because you can't necessarily say they lost for a lack of effort or a lack of trying. 44 shots on goal, uh, seven chances on the power play. They go 0 for 7, only four penalty minutes on their end. The Leafs go 0 for 2 on their power play. 27 blocked shots from the Toronto Maple Leafs. I mean, the defense and the goaltending, you have to give a ton of credit to Leafs netminder Matt Murray, who played a fantastic game, and the the Leafs defense. I mean, they blocked a ton of shots, and the Stars just could not bury their chances. It's the first time we've seen them have a game like this this season, so hopefully this is just an anomaly, and we can see the Stars get back on track here in their next few games. But a very ugly loss, a very disappointing loss, and what was an opportunity for the stars to impress the Toronto media and impress the NHL world abroad uh, against one of the most recognizable, if not the most recognizable brand in the league and one of the better teams in the league right now, the Maple Leafs certainly heating up uh, as one of, if not the best team in the Eastern Conference right now. Uh, Just a ton of weapons. They were on full display. Mitch Marner extends his point streak. Matthews gets a goal. Tavares gets a goal. Just an all-around rough night at the American Airlines Center, but the Dallas Stars will be back in action very, very soon on Thursday, and we'll be talking all about this Tuesday night game on Wednesday's episode of Locked on Stars and talk about how the Stars can move on from this and head forward with their heads held high. We'll talk about that on Wednesday's episode. We'll see you there. The Panthers finished their road trip with another loss on the West Coast. This time they fell to the Jets in Winnipeg. Locked on Panthers reviews the trip and a cold streak that's gone with it. The Florida Panthers finished their final game of this West Coast trip. Plagued with injuries, shorthanded, and tonight felt like a scheduled loss for the Cats. What is up, guys? This is Armando Velez from the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. And the Florida Panthers lose to the Winnipeg Jets by a final score of 5-2 to two in Manitoba, bringing their West Coast trip to five points out of a possible 10. With the new guys being called up and having to juggle up lines and deep pairs as well and facing off against a goalie that's in the conversation for the Vesna trophy for, for this matchup, the Florida Panthers, they just got to bury the tape and move on to the next one. Great news is that uh, Carter Verhage is still hot scored on the power play for the Panthers and the call up line for the cats. They, they got a goal in this one as Zach Delpy leads on the rush and Chris Tierney gets a pass to him to make it 4-2 at the time. But the Panthers were just two pinned in their own zone, losing every face off. It was two thirds in favor of Winnipeg and too many penalties, especially to start off in the first period, which took away a lot of the zone time for the Florida Panthers, even though they came out in the second period firing on Connor Hellebuck. But n- not much you can do for the Florida Panthers in this one. So to listen to my recap of this 5-2 to two loss against the Winnipeg Jets, make sure to listen to my next episode of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, where Jacob Winans will be joining the show to break down this 5-2 to two loss. 
Sometimes the only way to move forward is to deal with your past, and Winnipeg did exactly that against the Florida Panthers, defeating Paul Maurice and the Panthers 5-2. The Jets controlled play for a good portion of the game, and then, with a massive lead, seemingly just sat back and let the Panthers kind of try and push back, which Florida did a pretty good job, but you know what? Hellebuck and the Jets did a better one. Hellebuck in particular was stupendous, and Winnipeg was super clinical in the first couple of periods, allowing them to coast in the third. Not everything was perfect, but in a major win like this, a statement win in which the Jets were looking to, you know, put all of the past behind them and move forward under Rick Bonus, it was a statement of intent for the future. We'll cover this game on tomorrow's episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets, so be sure to like, follow, and subscribe right now for more. I'm Harrison Lee of Locked On Winnipeg Jets. See y'all soon, and as always, go Jets go. The St. Louis Blues went into Long Island. They beat the Islanders with seven goals yesterday after things fell flat for New York. Locked on Islanders recaps that loss. The New York Islanders played a flat game and fell 7-4 to to the St. Louis Blues. Gil Martin of Locked on Islanders here. A frustrating performance by the New York Islanders. You know, we are used to this team getting off to slow starts. That's happened, unfortunately, a little too often this season. But... In this game, they really were sluggish, and even though the Islanders were out shooting the Blues through two periods, the quality of chances were way in favor of the Blues, and St. Louis took full advantage. Not a lot that the uh, Ilya Sorokin could have done under the circumstances. The first two goals come on -on two-on-one breakaways that the Islanders gave up with some turnovers and some bad defense, and then the third goal was just a superhuman effort Uh, by O'Reilly to score as he was falling to the ground on a rebound. Bad overall performance. They rallied late, but it wasn't enough. And you're not going to be able to overcome those slow starts all the time. Tonight, the Islanders couldn't, and it cost them a game they probably should have won. For more, listen to and watch the Locked On Islanders podcast with me, Gil Martin, wherever you get podcasts. The Detroit Red Wings scored three third-period goals to hold off the Lightning in Tampa on Tuesday. Locked on Red Wings looks at how Detroit closed the door in the final period. What a game. What a game for the Detroit Red Wings. A heck of a victory, a 4-2 victory over the Tampa Bay Lightning in Newsy's return to Tampa Bay. Nice little video tribute before, and then it was all business. And the boys came out buzzing. Uh... Unbelievable hockey game, just optic, optically and entertainment-wise. There was probably the most entertaining hockey game of the year so far for the Red Wings. And obviously the biggest story is Huso in that has a phenomenal performance. Faces almost 30 shots alone in the third period, over 40 saves. Single-handedly kept the Wings in it. Was the biggest star in this game for sure. Wings looked really good defensively for the first two periods as well. Just High energy, fast skating, boys were buzzing, and they leave Tampa with a victory. We're going to talk about it all today on Locked On Red Wings. Coming up, scoring bursts for the Penguins and the Kings get both teams wins. This is Locked On Game to Game NHL. Today's edition of Locked On Game to Game is brought to you by Bet Online, the number one spot for all of your online sports betting needs. No matter what sport you are interested in, whatever you like to play, props or just the line or whatever you want to bet on, you can do that at betonline.net. It's where the game starts. Welcome back to Locked On Game to Game NHL. I'm your host, Kainani Steven. Thank you so much for making Locked On your first listen every single weekday. The Blue Jackets scored the first goal of the night in Pittsburgh on Tuesday, but the Penguins tallied the next four to make it look easy for them as they got a win for their hometown fans. Locked On Penguins and Blue Jackets recap the final. Stop me if you've heard this before, the Pittsburgh Penguins have defeated the Columbus Blue Jackets. Hey everyone, I'm Hunter Hodes, here with the Locked On Penguins podcast, back with another Locked On Now video, as the Penguins again have defeated the Jackets by a score of 4-1. to one. That's two wins against the Jackets this season, and they've beaten the Jackets 16 out of the last 18 times that they have played them. They've also moved to 4-0-1 and one in the Metropolitan Division, and have won 10 of their last 14 games overall. They're also third place in the Metropolitan Division. Cindy Crosby, a two-goal night. He's now tied for fifth in the league in points, starting to really gain some traction for potentially winning the Hart Trophy this season. Brian Russ has goals in back-to-back games. Tristan Jari had another stellar performance. And this team is really starting to put it together right now. They've won 10 of their last 14, eight of their last 10. They'll be back in action on Friday against the Buffalo Sabres as they try to potentially go for second place in the Metropolitan Division. For more on the Pittsburgh Penguins, you can check out the Locked On Penguins podcast wherever you get your podcasts. 
It's time for the Blue Jackets to fire Brad Larson. Jay Foster locked on Blue Jackets here. Now, I know what you're thinking. It's just a it's a Tuesday game against the Penguins. What, what does it matter? Well, I'll tell you why it matters. Uh, Brad Larson is driving this team into the ground. Um, I thought the team themselves played fine. Uh, some really good performances from a lot of people, but here are some things that stand out to me. Igor Chinikov, 13 shot attempts for, one against, 7 minutes, 43 seconds of ice time. Cole Salinger, 12 shot attempts for, one against, 7.51 ice time. Uh, Sean Corrali, 10 attempts for, 14 against, 10.13 of ice time. Matthew Olivier, 9.43 ice time, 10 shot attempts for, 13 against. They just, they don't want to play. They don't want to play the kids. They don't want to play the people that are succeeding. They want to play this specific style of hockey that isn't working for them, is actively losing them games, and they're doing it at the expense of the development of their best young players. Like, if you're only going to play Cole Sillinger for a total of 8.49 in a game, I don't know what we're doing here. He's got a Corsi 4 percentage of 93%, and he's sitting on the bench for the entire second period. Like, what are we doing here? Um... I have more thoughts on this game. Uh, I don't think it's as doom and gloom as I kind of started off, but something's got to change with this team. Uh, we're going to talk about all of that on tomorrow's episode of Locked on Blue Jackets. Check it out wherever you get your podcasts or on YouTube. Make sure you stay locked on. Four LA goals in the first period ended things pretty quickly for the Senators against the Kings. Locked on Kings and Senators go into how things played out in Ottawa. The LA Kings start their big six-game road trip with a rare, comfortable win. I'm Eddie Garcia with the Locked On LA Kings podcast. The Kings led wire to wire in a convincing 5-2 victory in Ottawa over the Senators. LA scored just a minute 35 into the game and never trailed. The Kings scored four first-period goals. The first two came from defensemen Matt Roy and Mikey Anderson. That was in the first 215 of the game. Victor Arvidsson added two more goals in the period, one on the power play. Kevin Viala added a second power play goal for the Kings' ever-improving power play. Andre Kopitar finished with three assists on the night. The only downer for the Kings continues to be their struggling penalty kill as the Senators' two goals both came on the power play. Phoenix Copley, the Kings' new number two goalie with Cal Peterson in the AHL, stopped 31 of 33 shots for Earth to win in his LA Kings debut. Uh, the Kings with that victory are now 14, 10, and 4 on the season for 32 points. We'll have a full recap of the win over the Senators on Wednesday's show. For more, check out Locked on LA Kings wherever you get your podcasts, your team every day. We're not mad, just disappointed. The Ottawa Senators start their father's trip with a 5 2 loss on home ice to the Los Angeles Kings. I'm Ross Levitan from Locked on Senators, and this one was over just about as soon as it got started. L.A. scored twice in the opening two minutes and 15 seconds, and it was 4-1 L.A. after the first period. Both of Ottawa's goals came on the power play by your usual suspects, but the bottom six didn't produce. The defending wasn't great. We'll get into it on the postcast right now. You can tune in live on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts in the morning. It's a Locked On Senators podcast, your team every day. The New Jersey Devils continue to play as the hottest team in hockey, shutting out the Blackhawks on Tuesday. Locked on Devils has more after New Jersey's first shutout of Chicago in more than two decades. What's up? This is Trey Matthews of Locked on Devils, and here is my post-game reaction. So, for the first time since December of 1999, the New Jersey Devils have shut out the Chicago Blackhawks by a score of 3 to nothing. The main story in this game was Vitek Vancek because he was fantastic in between the pipes once again, making a lot of grade A saves and stopping all 24 of the Chicago Blackhawks' shots. And the Devils got a lot of great production from a lot of their top-notch players, especially in period number one because we saw Dougie Hamilton score, but Dougie Hamilton got a great assist from Jack Hughes, who took on four defenders. And then as the game progressed, you saw Nico Heischer scored, Jesper Bratt scored. So as the game went on, the New Jersey Devils got better because towards the end of period number one, they allowed uh, the Chicago Blackhawks to have the final eight shots of that period. But come period number three, the Devils were able to shut them down once again. So uh, the Devils just continue to bounce back because they've had a few rough games the past few go-rounds at it. But this game was uh, a definitely a good step in the right direction as they continue to try to have a very good season. The Kraken lost at home to the Canadians with three Montreal goals in the second period, making the difference yesterday. Locked on Kraken tells you what made Seattle fall short at home. Tuesday night at Climate Pledge Arena, Shane Wright scored his first NHL goal. 
That got the Seattle Kraken level at one goal aside with the Montreal Canadiens. Unfortunately, that's not the end of the story. In seven seconds, the Seattle Kraken went from a 1-1 game to a 3-1 game in favor of Montreal. There is a lot that happened in this game, particularly on the defensive side. Obviously, we'll talk to Shane Wright and hear how his first game back with Seattle was after his AHL stint. But ultimately, defensive breakdowns hurt this team once again at home. We'll talk about it more on Wednesday's episode of Locked on Kraken. That's going to do it for this edition of Locked On Game to Game NHL. Thank you so much for making Locked On your first listen every single weekday. Make sure that you are subscribed to Locked On NHL and your favorite team's Locked On podcast both on YouTube and wherever else to get your podcasts from. I'm Kanani Stevens. This has been Locked On Game to Game.